Like a blind man who walked in the darkness I had long, I'd searched for the light Then I met the Master When he found me A new world came through All around me When I met the master I walked no more in the night for all things were changed when he found me a new world came through all around me when i met the master i walked Thank you for joining us this evening. We are so glad to have a few moments of your time and share with you the Word of God. And uh, we'd like to take this opportunity to invite you out to New Life Tabernacle. Our services are Sunday morning at 10 a.m., Sunday evening at 6 p.m. We have our Bible study on Wednesday night at 7. And then we have a corporate prayer on Monday evenings at 6 o'clock. Uh, we just pray either in our homes or at the church, but we would love to have you come out and be with us. We are seeing uh, quite a move of the power of the Spirit of God, uh, God touching our children, God touching adults, uh, healings taking place. We would just truly love you to come out and experience that with us, and uh, we would uh, thoroughly enjoy having you visit the church. And uh, tonight, uh, I just have a simple message tonight, and uh, just simply Jesus is what I want to talk about. And in John uh, 10, verse 7, it says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door of the sheep. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am so glad out of all the millions of people in the world that God allowed me to find him. I wasn't as old as I am now. I was just a 17-year-old young man. Um, but as uh, 41 years later, I feel an urgency in my spirit as we see the times that we live in that this is a heaven or hell situation. We, we must live for God because there's no halfway house. We're, we're either going to make it to heaven or we're going to be lost and spend eternity in a devil's hell. Amen. That was prepared for the devil and his angels, and now it will accommodate lost mankind. Amen. And it, it isn't about a, a man's plan. It's about God's plan, a plan that started back in Genesis and is fulfilled throughout the Word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. What great uh, measures God went to to bring forth salvation to man. And I am stirred in my heart that, that as a pastor of a church, I want to preach the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And uh, 
it, it, for me, it, it is about reaching people and helping people to come to Jesus Christ, to find that door, to find that opening where we know and understand that God can make that change in our life. The late Billy Graham preached to thousands, yea, probably millions across the world. But Billy Graham preached a simple gospel, the power of the cross. But it wasn't just the cross and him dying for our sins, but it was the power of his resurrection. The apostle Paul said, oh, that I might know him, not just in the power of his resurrection, but in the fellowship of his suffering. I want you to know tonight that, or today even, that, that the cross where he died for me is overwhelming to me. To know that while I was yet a sinner, just a young man doing some wild and crazy things, that God loved me. That I was in places where I could have lost my life or been arrested, and I found a God that his grace and mercy overshadowed me even when I did not even know him. And that gospel came into my life. I walked into a church ignorant, unlearned, not knowing anything about Jesus, my Savior, about church, about God. I knew nothing. And I found myself as a rowdy young man, alcohol and drugs kneeling in an altar beside my father, <clears throat> being instructed on how to repent of my sins and worship God for the very first time. And uh, quite an experience that was for me. I had been high on different things, but I'd never been high on Jesus Christ. And so as these years later have come, I preached the same message that I experienced that day, March 16th, 1980. And uh, for me, I want to be sure, I want to be right. When I'm preaching to sinners and lost souls, I want to stay in the Bible. It's not about the articles of faith about, of my church. It's about the Bible. Amen. You see, uh, a lot of people put a lot of stock in church doctrines and philosophies, but if your church doctrine doesn't match the word, then you better get your church doctrine to match the word of God. Amen. And uh, it disturbs me uh, that preachers can preach a message that doesn't correlate with the word of God. And I'm not here to cross swords or, or be contentious tonight. I just want to reach people. You see, uh, there is in the Bible... Uh, in John chapter 3, a man, a religious man, came to Jesus by night. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, the spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. I think it's every Christian's goal is to enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. I don't subtract from anything anyone has. As a matter of fact, my mama said when I was young, if a Catholic priest would have reached my son, she would have been thankful. But I'm so glad that God didn't put me in just any church. He put me in a church that I truly believe preaches the whole truth, the whole gospel. Ephesians 4 and 5 says there is one Lord, one faith, 
and one baptism. Amen. I am so glad that on that day when I knelt at that apostolic Pentecostal altar, I was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I spoke in a language I'd never learned. I was totally ignorant. I didn't even know there was a such thing as a Holy Ghost. And uh, after I finished praying quite some time, as a matter of fact, the shirt, the suit that I had borrowed was soaked with perspiration. Amen. God wrung me out with an experience. Amen. When I was finished praying, my would-be pastor put his arm around my shoulder and he said, if you want to make your salvation complete, then you'll get buried in the name of Jesus Christ in water baptism. And so I went to a river. Amen. And uh, March uh, was just last month, and I'll guarantee you the river in March is not warm. But I went down into the Buchanan River and was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sins. That's the only baptism that's in the Bible. So many are of this area cling to Matthew 28, 19. But understand something tonight, that the Gospel of Matthew, according to the scholars, was not written until between A.D. 80 and 90. And some scholars even stretch it out that it may have ranged between A.D. 70 to A.D. 110. So how were people baptized before the script of Matthew 28, 19 came into existence? Well, I'll tell you how they were baptized. The way they were baptized, amen, on the day of Pentecost. And uh, some say, well, it doesn't matter to be baptized or not. Well, 1 Peter 3, 18 through 21, it says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometimes were disobedient, when once the long-suffering God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. And verse 21 says, The like figure, whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I want you to know something, amen, that the watery grave of baptism buries that old man, amen, puts him under the blood of Jesus, washes away your sins, amen. Mark 16 and 16 tells us, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be be damned. That word damned means in the Greek language eternally condemned. I don't want to be eternally condemned. If I've got to be baptized, I'll be baptized. Amen. If I've got to be filled with the Spirit, I'll be filled with the Spirit. I recently saw a first time visitor in our church last Sunday night come to the altar and throw his hands up and began to worship God and God gloriously and magnificently filled him with the Holy Spirit. Spirit, Holy Ghost, as he spoke in a language he had never learned. Amen. It's still happening today in 2021. You want a fresh experience? You want a blessing? You want under touch from God? Get under the spout where the glory comes out. You see Acts chapter 2, where the church began. Amen. At verse 37, it says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Amen. Then Peter said unto them, repent. That's a turning around. Many people live that, that life right there in Buchanan. They've repented of their sins. They've accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. And that's as far as they've went. But when the church began, and I don't take away from that, I really do not. He said unto them, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission. The word remission in the Greek language also translates to the forgiveness of your sins. 
sins. You want your sins washed away, blotted out by the blood, get baptized in his name, and here you go. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. He is the door of the sheepfold. He is knocking at the door of your heart and saying, will you follow me? Amen. Again, I want to reiterate to you, it's just a simple gospel. It's about Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection, fulfilling salvation that he told them in Luke 24 would happen at Jerusalem in Acts chapter 2. I'm not contentious. I just want to be right. I want to be ready. I want to be saved. I want to make it to heaven. And I want to take everyone with me that I can. Amen. The thing about being a pastor, I can't take my money. I can't take my home or my old truck or my dog. But what I can take with me when I go to heaven is the people I go to church with, my children and my grandchildren, the bus kids that ride my, the bus that come and brings them to Sunday school. I can take them to heaven with me. So my goal is not as uh, I do this broadcast to be contentious but it's to spread the gospel, to put the simple Jesus out before you, the Jesus that touched my life. I pray that he'll touch you no matter where you are, if you're seated in your home, amen, wherever you may be, amen, watching on uh, a, a computer, let God talk to you. He's coming soon. He's coming back. Let's get ready to meet him. Let's have revival until he comes. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Come back again and be with us. Come out to New Life Tabernacle. We would love to have you. God bless you in Jesus' name. There's a lot of people in this world that don't understand How God revealed himself to earth as Christ the man But since he came my broken heart has been made whole I found new life in the greatest story ever told I've got a little bit of heaven in this land I've been touched and I've been changed by the master's hand All oh, the promises of God have been good to me It's nice to know that by God's grace I've been set free what a thrill to hear the preacher speak the Savior's words. It made more sense than anything I've ever heard. It took my burdens and gave me a brand new song to sing. So it's amazing grace, oh hallelujah, let his praises ring. I've got a little bit of heaven in this land. I've been touched and I've been changed by the master's hand. All oh, the promises of God have been good to me. It's nice to know that by God's grace I've been set free. I've got a little bit of heaven in this land. I've been touched and I've been changed by the master's hand. All oh, the promises of God have been good to me. It's nice to know that by God's grace I've been set free. It's nice to know that by God's grace I've been set free.